Hello and welcome to episode 2 in this three-part course in MeshFusion. If you've ended up here without watching the first video in this course and are wondering what MeshFusion is, I'd recommend checking out the first episode where we go over the basics. In this video, we'll be modelling the midsole of this shoe. If you're not sure what a midsole is, it's basically the part of the sole between the actual shoe and the treads. So the first thing that I want to do before modelling is to set up some backdrops just so I can see my reference images and I'm not modelling blindly. There are two ways that we can set up a backdrop. The first way is to go to the view you want your backdrop to be in by holding down control and space and then selecting the view you want. From here, you can just drag and drop your image in and then resize it so that it fits the size of the shoe model. The second way is to create a backdrop in the items list and then assign an image to it there. My second reference image should be in the bottom view, so I'm going to switch to that view and set it up. Okay, so I've created my backdrop in the items list, but I'm not seeing anything. This is because automatically backdrops aren't constrained to a camera and need to be assigned. Because I'm in my bottom view, I need to change the projection type to bottom. Now we can see the backdrop, let's assign an image to it. To do this, double click the button next to image and click add clip in the window that pops up. From here, you can load in UDIMs, sequences, and a few other things, but we want an image, so I'm going to click load image, and then navigate to where my other reference image is saved. Now that my second image is loaded in, I'm going to resize it really quickly and move it so I can get a clearer view of it when I get to modelling the shoe tread in episode 3. You've probably also noticed that the image is flipped. This is absolutely fine, all I need to do is check the flip box in the properties panel, and now it's matching up with my shoe model. Now that I have both of my reference images loaded in, I'm going to quickly switch to the perspective view and do a bit of housekeeping. The first thing that I'm going to do is select both of my backdrops in the items list and then uncheck show in perspective. This basically means that my backdrops are now only visible in the views that they're being projected in. With both of them selected, I'm also going to lock them by right clicking and selecting lock unlock in the items list, just so that they don't get in my way while I'm modelling. Okay, so now that the scene is all set up, let's get started. Right now, all we have is the shoe stock and no sole. So before we can start using mesh fusion, we need to create a base mesh for all the fusion operations to be applied to. To make this base mesh, I'll be creating a cube and then resizing it so it's roughly the same width and length of the shoe. Once it's roughly the same size, I'm going to use the add loop tool found in the edge tab and add some new edge loops that I can then use to resize and manipulate the cube so that it's shoe shaped. So you're probably thinking, this looks nothing like the reference image, but at this stage, that's totally fine. The great thing about Mesh Fusion is that you can start off with a really rough base and you can use a mixture of procedural and direct modeling tools to drive fusion operations to carve out the shapes that we want. So now that I have the rough shape of my shoe, I'm just going to quickly change to the left view and move my base model so that it's covering all the areas of my shoe that have a midsole in my reference image. I'm also going to do a couple final tweaks to the rough shape of the midsole, like in this back area, just so that it matches up a bit better. Once that's done, I'm going to use the add loop tool again to add some resolution to my mesh. Mesh Fusion lights meshes with a bit of density, so this is basically going to make sure that everything goes smoothly once we get going. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is add some safety edge loops. As I mentioned in the previous video, when your mesh is converted into a fusion item, it gets subdivided. This means that if I hit tab, we can see that my nice sharp edges get rounded and we lose a lot of definition in our shape. We want to try and keep those edges as sharp as possible when our mesh is converted, so to combat this, we use safety edge loops. So to make those safety edge loops, I'm going to be selecting all the faces at the top of my mesh and then press shift B to create a bevel. With the bevel tool activated, I'm going to scale inwards so that we get a nice ring of faces around the top of our mesh. I'm now going to repeat that process again on the bottom of the shoe and then use the add loop tool to add some safety edge loops to the side of the mesh so that everything is nice and tight when it gets subdivided. If I press tab again, you can see that we still have those nice sharp edges and we're not losing any definition in our shape. I'm also just going to quickly rename this mesh in the items list so it's easier to identify as we start adding more mesh items later on. Okay, now that we have a nice base mesh to work with, let's get started with the mesh fusioning. 
Now, I mentioned earlier that we can use Mesh Fusion to carve out the contours of our shoe. But how do we do that? I'm going to quickly go to my left view and hide my shoe and midsole so that I can get a better look at my reference image. In the reference image, the top of the midsole is actually quite curved and almost shaped like a tick. To create this shape, I'm going to be using curves and some mesh ops to create a cutter that we can then use to carve into our mesh to get that shape. So the first thing that I'm going to do is press N to create a new item and then rename it Top Cutter. I'm then going to grab the Beast Line Curve tool that can be found in the Create tab and start tracing that top curve in the reference image. I want to try and keep this curve as sweeping as I can with minimal points just so that I don't end up with any wonky lines later on. Although, when I get to this corner bit, I do want a bit more definition just so it's a bit sharper, so I'm going to create three points close to each other just to tighten things up a bit. Before dropping the tool, I'm also just going to adjust some points that may have been skewed along the way, and then press Q to drop the tool once I'm happy with it. This curve isn't actually going to do much on its own, so what we want to do is use a Curve Rebuild and a Curve Extrude Mesh Op to extrude the curve into one long plane. Before I do this though, I'm just going to quickly switch to my top view so I can move the curve so that it's set next to my model and not inside it. This ensures that when we extrude the curve and then subtract it, we get a nice clean cut all the way through the fusion item. Before I can actually extrude this curve though, I need to create a driver that the Curve Extrude Mesh Op can use to determine how long the extrusion needs to be and in what direction it should be going. So to do this, I'm going to press N again to make a new mesh item and then rename it Top Driver. I'm then going to grab the curve tool and just make a curve that goes from one side of the mesh to the other. Once that's made, I'm going to go back to my top cutter item and start adding my mesh ops. If it's not already open, the mesh operation window can be opened by pressing the mesh operation viewport button found at the top of your viewport. Now that that's open, I'm going to use the add operator button to apply a curve rebuild mesh op. This will basically add more points to the curve without adjusting the shape of it meaning that when we extrude the curve, the extrusion will just be a lot smoother. Once that's been applied, I'm going to apply a Curve Extrude Mesh Op. Now, when this Mesh Op is applied, this window will pop up. This window is where you'll assign your driver curve and is also a good reason as to why it's important to name your mesh items. Because I renamed my driver as Top Driver, it's easy to pick out from this drop down and then apply it. If I hadn't been renaming my mesh items as I was making them, it will be a lot harder to try and decipher what mesh item should be driving my extrusion. So I'm going to quickly assign that top cutter mesh as my driver and then press OK. As you can see, the curve has now been extruded. By default, the extrusion makes start and end caps on the extruded mesh. We don't want or need those, so we can turn them off by unticking start cap and end cap in the properties window. Now that we have a cutter, let's use it to shape up our midsole. The first thing that we need to do though is to create a fusion item. To do this, select the midsole mesh in the items list and then open up the fusion tab. With the mesh still selected, press new fusion and we now have a fusion item. With our fusion item ready, I'm going to select the cutter and then hold shift and double click the fusion item to select the source mesh. With both of those selected, I'm going to press the subtract trim button in the fusion tab. Now as you can see, we've had a big chunk of the mesh chopped off the top of our midsole and it's beginning to look a bit more shoe-like. The curve isn't where it needs to be though, but that's an easy fix. Because Mesh Fusion is non-destructive, all I need to do is select that driver curve mesh and then just move it up until the top of my Fusion item is lined up with my reference image. Mesh Fusion will also update live as you're adjusting the curve, so all the guesswork is taken out. Okay, so now that we have the top of the sole cut out, let's repeat the process to carve out the bottom. So, to recap, create a new mesh item by pressing N and then rename it to Bottom Cutter. Using the B Spline tool, trace out the curve at the bottom of the shoe, but ignore the cutout part. We'll be dealing with that later. Once the curve is drawn out, navigate to the top view and then move it so it's to the side of the shoe. Create another new mesh item and name it Bottom Driver. Use the Curve tool to create a straight curve that cuts through the shoe and then drop the tool. Select your bottom cutter in the items list and then create a Curve Rebuild and then a Curve Extrude Mesh Op. Assign the driver to be your bottom driver mesh and then press OK. Make sure to turn off your start and end caps and then with the cutter selected, double click your fusion item to select your source mesh. 
With both selected, press the subtract button and use the driver curve to adjust the position of the curve as you need. All right, so now that our shoe is shaped up, let's tackle some of the details. So the first thing that I want to do is cut out this trapezoid shape that cuts into the sole of the shoe. To do this, I'm gonna create a cube by holding down shift and then clicking the cube button in the create tab. I'm now just gonna rename and resize the cube so it's roughly the same size as the cutout in the reference image. I'm now just gonna grab the bottom two edges of the cube and scale outwards so the cube ends up tapered just like the reference image. Now, I know this isn't gonna cut through the whole of my shoe, so I'm gonna quickly go to the top view and then scale it so it goes through the whole of the shoe just like the cutters do. Because I know this is gonna be subdivided when I assign it as a fusion roll, I'm gonna select all my edges and then use the chamfer tool to add some safety edge loops so I don't lose any of that definition. Once I have those safety edge loops in place, I'm gonna select this item and then shift double click the fusion item so I can select my source mesh and apply subtraction. Now that we've got the cutout in the sole of the shoe, it's beginning to look a lot more shoe-like. While we're subtracting things, I also want to quickly cut out these triangle pieces from the bottom of my shoe. To do this, I'm going to follow the same steps that we just did to create the first triangle and then subtract it. So to make the other two triangle cutouts, we could create another two triangle meshes and just subtract them, but there's a quicker way that we can go about this. So what I'm gonna do is select that first triangle cutout by double clicking the patches that were created by the subtraction and then open up the Fusion Utilities tab. In here, we can find a couple options for duplicating meshes, but the cool thing about these options is that you can duplicate with the Fusion operation already applied. Because my first triangle is subtracting, I'm gonna press the Duplicate Add Subtractive button and we now have a second triangle that's also subtracting. So you may not be able to see our duplicate triangle at first, but that's because it's been duplicated in the same place as our original triangle. To fix this, I'm just gonna move it along a bit so that it matches the reference image. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'm then gonna repeat this process for the third triangle and we're good to go. So the next thing that we're gonna do is work on these side panel pieces. Because they actually conform to the side of the shoe, we're gonna be using the topology tools to draw out this shape and then use a polygon extrude mesh op to add a bit of thickness. So before we start drawing out our side panel, I'm gonna create another new mesh item, rename it, and then turn on mesh constraint. Mesh constraint basically means that as I draw out the panel with the topology tools, it will conform to the shape of whatever mesh is underneath it. I'm gonna activate the topology pen tool and control left click on my mesh to create my first quad. I'm then gonna shift left click on my bounding edges to draw new polygons and start fleshing out the shape. I'm trying to be conscious of including safety edge loops, so I'm approaching the shape by first drawing an outline and then filling it in so that I know I'll be keeping my edge definition. Once I finish drawing out the shape, I'm gonna press Q to drop the tool and then turn mesh constraint off so I can move my mesh out a little bit before I apply the polygon extrude. Now that I have my mesh positioned where I want it, I'm gonna to go to the Mesh Ops window again and add a polygon extrude. In the Properties window, I'm gonna add a bit of depth in the X axis and then we're good to apply the Fusion Roll. Same as all the other times, I'm gonna select the new mesh and then double click my Fusion item to select the Source Mesh. With both selected, I'm now gonna press the Add Trim button to fuse my two meshes together. With those two joined, I'm just gonna repeat that same process on the other side so that I have two panels and then check back in when I'm done. Okay, so now that that second panel is attached and everything that needed to be cut out has been cut out and everything that needed to be added has been added, I think this is a good place to finish up. In the next episode of this course, I'll be showing you guys how to create the outsole and tread of this shoe, as well as go over some cool features in Mesh Fusion, like the embossing tools. For more information on any of the tools that I've used in this video, head over to learn.foundry.com where you can find our user guide and more tutorials. Thanks for watching.